The birds are singing, the plants are blooming. It's a great time to be outside. So we thought we'd check in with our favorite gardener, Cisco Morris, to show us a flower that he thinks is really cool. And if he thinks it's cool, it is. Good morning. How are you, Cisco? Hey, I'm great, Margaret. So nice to see you. Oh, la la. You too. This is the best plant you'll ever have in your garden. I just love this. You know, uh, it's called a butylon. It comes from South America. This one has got a horrible name called Megapotamicum. <laughs> but this thing, this is the one that's definitely hardy, although they're making some hybrids now of this that are hardy. So I've had this in my garden for years. And you know what? I was kind of worried that while I'm out here doing this on my patio, a hummingbird might come and start going to them. They love these so much, they can't resist them. That's like the best recommendation because I think we all really love the hummingbirds to, you know, stick around in the yard and the garden. Now, you say they're hardy. Are they going to make it through the winter? And are we putting them in the garden or pots or how do we do this? All right, that's a great question. You know, this megapotamicum, I always plant in the garden. And I try and put it in a protected spot where it's not in baking hot sun or anything. And it should come back every year. And I live in one of the coldest parts of Seattle, and it does great. So this one I stick in the ground. Now, this guy right here, this is really exciting to me because this is called Megapotamicum Red, and it's not so viney like the other one is. This is more upright. It gets six feet tall. And uh, so it's got these beautiful flowers that hummingbirds can't resist. This one I put in a pot and I cover it with something that lets the, I have something called frost protect. I think I've shown them on the show. And uh, you, you put that over it in the winter and I have not lost this. I've had this out there for six years now. This one is a little difficult to find. So uh, if you grow this one, I mean, if you find it, buy it, but it's not mainstream yet, but it'll start showing up in the nurseries in the next year, probably. So it's a good one. And uh, Oh, that's a good thing one, to keep our eye out for. Oh, yeah. And so this one right here could take a lot more sun. It's called Voodoo. Look at those flowers. If you were a hummingbird, would you? Oh, my gosh. And, you know, they're <laughs> in the high business family. They're kind of like a hibiscus and this one I grow in the ground, but I know it'll die even if I cover it. So I have to dig it out and stick it in my unheated garage. But this doesn't get too big. You could bring it in the house and grow it as a house plant. When I was a kid in Wisconsin, I grew these all the time as house plants and they bloomed right in the house. The only problem is we have the Anna's hummingbird here in Washington. And it stays year round. If it sees it in your living room, it might come in to start chewing at it. You know, you gotta I don't watch know. That out. could be good. Those flowers are so pretty. They look like lit lanterns or something when they hang down. Now, I need to ask you about pruning because you're brutal. You're so much braver than, <laughs> than I am about well, cutting them yeah. back. What should that look like? I, okay, I'm gonna have my assistant hand me this prop. <laughs> Would that be uh, Mary? <laughs> so, so, yeah. So in spring, when, uh, you know, and this this is a pretty viney one anyway. So in spring, you're going to have this big, long thing. If you cut it off way up here somewhere, on, on, you're going to only get growth up there. And I didn't really get around to pruning this one in spring as well as I should have. So in spring, what you're going to want to do with this big, long thing you're going to cut it back, oh, about that tall from the ground. You could oh. actually, you can go to, you can go this I far. Knew but, I uh, knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Here's the problem. The farther you cut back, if you cut really far back, you won't get flowers till later in summer. And so I don't cut them too far back because I want those flowers as early as I can get them to make. They bloom all summer, by the way. They're often blooming at Thanksgiving. So, wow. Now, I've seen these occasionally, but I don't know where to buy them. What's our best bet for getting these plants? Oh, that's great. 
You know, uh, the nurseries carry them, so the, the high-quality nurseries are where you're going to have to go to get one of these. And they're usually in, you know, around where all the annuals are and things. So a lot of people just grow these as an annual and just leave them out for the winter and hope for the best. And they might survive if we get a gentle winter, but usually they die but um, so any good nursery, usually where they have their annuals of things, they've got these. And uh, by the way, this is red tiger right here. Oh, la, la. This gets eight feet tall in my front garden. Pete, everybody walking by is like, what is that thing? I yes. dig this at the end of the season and put it in my unheated garage. I bring it in the house if Mary would let me, but there's no way. A 14-foot <laughs> house plant, that's kind of asking a lot. <laughs> it is, but that's a good compromise. Cisco, thank you very much. It was great to see your face. Hey, it's so great to see you too. Take care. I will, you too.